Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Very pleased to be here. This is my second time to be in Korea. Pleased to see the soul and the soul developed and the so beautiful the landscape with this morning come from a grand height ancient to here. And uh, of course, it takes a little bit of one and a half hours to get here. My talk is focus on cloud-based regulatory submission assessment. It's specifically related to ICHM4Q, CDD revision, or the FDA's what I call CASA initiative. KASA, which stands for Knowledge Aided Assessment and the Structured Application. So, of course, the first question you can ask me, why are you going to talk about some IT-related activity related to the pharmaceutical field? And today, 20 years ago, when M4Q R1 was developed, I would say iPhone is very infant stage. Today, pretty much every one of you has at least one iPhone. Frankly, I have two. On my left side here is iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's, it's myself. It, it, I bought it. Of course, my kids bought it as a birthday gift. On my, on my right side, there's another iPhone, which is related to the FDA business. You probably noticed what difference between my personal iPhone and the FDA iPhone. My personal iPhone is 14 Pro Max. FDA iPhone is iPhone 7. So you typically see is the Western culture is the government equipment is uh, way behind the modern ages. Of course, except the business. For example, I have to uh, come here to, for the trip, for the for the email checking. I barely use my business phone because my Pro Max is much more capable. For example, take photos, the pictures, the communicate, so on and so forth. But the key point is not so much iPhone 7 or iPhone 14. The key point is that the world is evolving. It's all the information now in the cloud. In fact, in my personal iPhone, all the picture is stored in cloud. I can access anywhere I go. But today's regulatory submission, today's regulatory assessment, today's events related to pharmaceuticals still stays very, very old equipment. So therefore, with the evolution of information te technology, it's time for us to evolve. In. It's time for us to change. It's time for us to transform. This is the key message I want to deliver with my talk. Of course, we talk about related to this. this uh, my, my area is related to pharmaceutical quality. A quality product, if any kind, consistently meet the, the expectations of the user. Drugs are no different. Patients accept, accept the safe, in fact, medicine with every dose they take. Pharmaceutical quality is assuring every dose safe, effective, free of contamination and defects. It is what gives the patients confidence in their next dose of medicine. So with that, I want to introduce you the future vision of regulatory assessment and submission. Even though my talk mainly focuses on quality, clearly this applies for other disciplines, safety, efficacy as well. There's no difference in terms of scientific communication here. So to this slide shows the current the environment. Hold on, I can take a picture for you. Thank you. I'm smile. Ready? Thank you. I'm sure I just want you to know uh, uh, a beautiful lady in the front doesn't want to take a picture of mine, so I want to make sure I cooperate with her. Don't share. So the current regulatory submission, here this slide share, share with you the current regulatory submission assessment. Many of you probably had an experience already. Typically, whether you're Korea FDA or whether Japan PMDA or United States FDA or EMA, you, you get your package prepared. Now, 20 years ago, when I joined FDA, in fact, it's hard paper copy. In, in, in order to be first of all called a filing, 
people literally stand in the door of the FDA building in order to be first. Of course, today, no longer hard copies. It's PDF copies. It's an electronic version. So today's environment is much more improved than when 20 years ago. But this, nevertheless, for you to, as an industry, you want to submit application, you have to go through FDA's gateway in order to submit FDA as a PDF file. Once the FDA receives a PDF file, our assessor, our review will make assessment use Microsoft Word's version. Then words become PDF, saved in the PDF in within FDA's IT system. Such kind of system certainly is much more, much more improvement at the very advanced version if you look at it in 20 years ago. But if you look at it today, we found lengthy, unstructured text narratives with the disparate information and the lack of efficient information sharing, knowledge management, and data analytics. This become a huge burden for you, industry, and for us, regulators. Why? If we, in order for us to find information for a specific old application, we have literally opened the PDF file, able to search. In other words, if you take iPhone right now, you find out all the information in the public information in the United States. Within FDA system, you cannot. You have to open file, open file, one for another in order looking for information. Of course, many cases, it's forgotten. You're not able to find information. And six years ago, FDA recognized this issue. In fact, one of the incentives for me to make this significant change is also iPhone. When I got my first iPhone 6, 2014, I found capability was amazing. I found if we can search our public drug information anywhere on the earth we want, we should be able to do the same within FDA system. So therefore, we started an initiative we call the CASA. We're making changes. In fact, today's for generic drug regulatory assessment, our, ass our system is already in the cloud. In other words, I can access if I want here. In such system, certainly it's much more advanced than PDF versus PDF. But the one of the challenges still is the lengthy submission with unstructured text narrative and lack of efficient information exchanging. What happened is our, our assessor, our assessor had to manually, manually input information from application to our CASA system manually. In many cases, they we call the cut and paste. It's like a picture cut and paste. In such kind of document, it's certainly not, not user-friendly, not searchable. So the, what does the look, future look like? The future envision is all the application, not only application, and also our system and digitalization is structured in the large database is stored. So both regulatory submission and assessment move into structured data format, enabling efficient regulatory submission, assessment, information sharing, knowledge man na management, and data analytics. In other words, if you can see from these slides versus the previous slides, that you do not need to submit the FDA. You need, do not need to submit the in Korea FDA. You do not need to submit to the Japan FDA, for example, if you want to apply the authorization from those countries or those regions. All you have to do is store your application form in the cloud, inform the FDA, give the FDA access code, they can go get inf whatever inf information we want FDA looking for. So in such kind of system, anywhere you go, you can access it. Anywhere you go, you have to communicate it. Of course, industries themselves can communicate, regulators themselves can communicate it. So there's a lot of advantage communicate that uh, uh, we see in such kind of environment. This is why you probably noticed things last year. I'm really actively promoting future regular submission assessment. It's one easy, and it will take time, but the future is really bright. It's a future more, furthermore, when the, all the information is stored in a structured format, all the data can be analyzed. 
and uh, this will provide a lot of advantage for the artificial intelligence. Some of you may be interested in artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning. You quickly realize one of the key fundamental success for artificial intelligence in the machine learning, deep learning is the data. Right now, FDA, we have a lot of data, but all the data is a PDF file. You're not able to search. You're not able to compare. You're not able to find out what is going on. In the future, we will. So this offers great, great advantage compared to the system we have today. So let me explain to you the, a little bit more detail what's happening, what needs to be done in order for us to get there. Of course, there's required two significant change. And not even change, I say tr transformation, more than a change or evolution. The first is regulators themselves have to be open mind, have to change. Of industry say, we'll give you a digitalized format. The regulators say, sorry, we're not gonna accept the digitalized format. We have to use PDF. You're not gonna get anywhere. So therefore, regulator has to evolving. Regulator has the transformation, number one. Number two, the submission has to be changed. This is why we had the opportunity actually starting tomorrow with in ancient great height, we started to talk about the revision of a CTD format for quality. Second, we need to develop a data standards. You could have used ideal situation or the contact format, but the data standard for each region, for each country is different. So it can call it nightmare for industry as well. So therefore, there's two fundamental change, regulated change, industry change. Industry change, there's two things about submission format change, also the defining of electronic data standards. So let me explain to you first about CASA, which is a knowledge-aided assessment structure application for the FDA. We have been working on for the last uh, six years. It's a lot of effort. In fact, after six years effort, we are pretty much, I would say, we finished roughly 30% of our assessment. There's still many more to come. So the, the, along the 2016, FDA's uh, CASA system was envisioned as meaning to modernize FDA's assessment or review by taking advantage of structured data, advanced analytics, and knowledge management, and, uh, and bottom, there's two figures, of course, you were wondering why I put it here. Let me explain to give you background information so you get some idea. The first is iPhone, this is iPhone 6. And I have to say, in the adoption of that new technology, my kids got the iPhone first. My wife got a second. You know, as a typical dad, is always the last person got the most advanced stuff, even though he pays everything. So when I got the iPhone 6, I found that capability and uh, was amazed what iPhone 6 can do. In fact, I able to search all the information about Korea, for example. I can find the hotel. I can find the restaurant. This, uh, this for you, young generation people is sitting in the audience like coming. Lawrence, what are you talking about? Of course, of course, when I was graduate school, we have to literally search the map, make phone calls. So I feel this is, if we can search all the public information, why not all the confidential information related to drug? We should be able to do the same. So therefore, we want I want to introduce the search function, like a Google type of search function from into the FDA's regulatory system. That's first. Second, I want to do. Second, I want to do is I'm truly believer of artificial intelligence. I was chemical engineer trained. I was working on the machine learning, deep learning. Frankly, in a way, artificial intelligence, I'm sorry, 30 years ago, today, of course, deep learning now is much more advanced. The neural network is much more advanced. I do believe that when we have enough data to feed the system, to feed the computer, computer able to do a lot of things human being is doing today. So therefore, if we're building such a system able to collect all the data for about the drug, and the drug able to so source those information within the regulatory system, able to tell us a lot of information we are not know today. So there's a fun comment to two things, search function, and second is the analytical function. And of course, you're wondering what's happening for the ship here. <clears throat> the largely is, in order to come up initiative, you need a name. 
I was really deep searching what this could be called for to our benefit regulators industry. Finally, come up with CASA, Knowledge Aided Assessment and Structure Application. Of course, CASA, K-A-S-A, could also stand for C-A-S-A. Some of you probably know C-A-S-A stands for house. So it's kind of beautiful, it's a home. Now we publish a paper because we not only <clears throat> with advanced, with a preliminary success within FDA, I published a paper in 2019, lead words know, in fact, I choose to specifically publish the International Journal of Pharmaceutics. So that way words want to know what is going on because I do want the other regulatory, not only just the, the CASA, but the transformation, digital transformation as well. Now, I'm not going to, I have already said a lot why, and, but I'll probably uh, put in the slides, give you a structure information. And today's assessment is pretty much a freestyle narrative, unstructured information, summarization of application information, and the kind of post, cut and paste. One of the significant issues with our candidate system is consistency, consistency, and consistency. Not only efficiency, but also hindrance. Oh, well, because our assessor would not know what happened to our neighbor assessor, to what happened to previously application. It's really create a significant issue, a burden for regulators. So what is CASA in definition? The CASA system is a database platform for structure, for structure quality assessment application that support knowledge management. Now, if you just look at all this definition, probably we're not able to capture what's going on. But the key information is behind the user-friendly interface is large database. This database support all the functionality, what's happening in the interface. So the way we define specific objective, uh, uh, we coin four major objective. The first, capture and manage knowledge during the life cycle of your product. For example, if, we are, if you receive application from FDA today, you will have specification of drugs product or drug substance, for example. Those specifications will be keep current when you make many, many changes down the road. So FDA knows exactly what's going on because we have a system keep up. Instead of before, you have a PDF version one, <coughs> and then have a PDF version two, and you have a PDF version three, so on and so forth, and you have to open all the PDF file in order to get to know what's going on. With the CASA system, all the information is current, so you don't have to keep, keep file. When we search for information within FDA, we want to know what is the quality standard for the specific product or drug substance we're looking for. That's number one. Number two, we emphasize <coughs> risk-based approach. So we want to include established roles and algorithm to facilitate facilitate risk identification, mitigation, and communication for the drug product, manufacturer, and facility. Lastly, as I said, number, th number three, perform computer aid analysis. And when we publish paper, we want to be humble, mild. I did not use buzzwords, for example, artificial intelligence and deep learning, machine learning, but that's a purpose. Computer aided analysis, certainly a little bit uh, lower level, but still serve its purpose. In other ways, we have all the data to do analysis to facilitate our decision making, facilitate our communication. Lastly, provide a structure assessment that's radically eliminated text-based narrative and symbolization for information from ex expectation. In other words, there's no cut paste, there's no manual, hopefully very limited manual input. And this system w was quite successful, I have to say, <coughs> When we introduce them, typically, I'm sure some of you may have experience when you introduce a new system, there's a lot of issues, bumps at the beginning, but this system is so smoothly implemented within FDA, our reviews, assessors really like so much. And therefore, in 2021, when we receive FDA Federal Health Innovation Award from the United States. Now, at the beginning, when we developed this system, we are pretty much related to generic drugs because large volume of generic drugs is really create a huge, huge burden for FDA. 
there's like a thousand applications coming every year. There's a 3,000 supplements coming. It's really nice, the uh, bu big building for our assessors. So relying on computer-based system create a great efficiency, create quality life balance for our reviews. So therefore, we start our CASA system for generic drugs. We found a successful in generic drugs, now we're moving into the new drugs. And also biologics. Now one thing I want to mention, you probably noticed, oh Lawrence, you simply move our review template from Microsoft Word's version into cloud. Not that simple. If this was that simple, all CASA would have been implemented. In fact, every single implementation requires three things. <clears throat> Number one, you have to redesign your template. The template has to be IT friendly because the computer acquired knowledge is slightly different from human, human being. It's different. So we want to make sure our template fits IT friendly, fits IT needs. This is number one. Number two, we want to make sure our template also user friendly. Even though you're IT friendly, but our review did not like it, it's very inefficient, certainly would defeat the purpose. So therefore, we will prototype what we call the desktop version implementation. And our review is going to practice, practice, and practice. During the practice, we're going to make a lot of improvement, what things you need to do. But during the first version, is desktop version. So therefore, there's no search function. In other words, your system is just a, your computer desk that did not connect the website. Lastly, after this implementation prototype version, we eventually put a system into the cloud. Once put in the cloud, you have everything we have promised you to do search function, and a lot of input, automatic input function, and so on and so forth. Just to give you one idea, for example, uh, we have a specific, uh, let's say, genotoxic impurity. And I want to know first, I want to know if this uh, genotoxic impurity has been approved by FDA before. Today, you will not know. You're probably going to ask the people around, but, but within car system, so you, they will tell you within a second. Secondly, if FDA has approved this specific impurity, what level have they approved? And it, the system able to tell you, here's application approved in 2020, here's another application approved in 2015, here's a level. So it's a great convenience and also effectiveness of our assessor makes assessment. So you can see from this figure, we really have a great vision. We started 2016, 2015, we were planning to until 2000, 2026. In other words, with a decades long effort. This is a serious business. <clears throat> government spent a lot, United States government spent a lot of money on this. Over the last 20 years, I think I'm working FDA for 2019, we have to start another, a number of initiatives. I know in this talk, we talk about quality design initiative. We talk about the concept paper of operation, uh, the inspection initiative. But this initiative, the government is so paid attention. In fact, we received $22 million funding for this project annually. This is a huge significant. So at the beginning, I'm talking about CASA, two version. Knowledge Aided Assessment, which is the KA, and also Structure Application, AC. We actually, I we come up with this name as two purpose, KA, is basically FDA can make all the changes internal based within regulators. But we recognize in order for us to change the submission, FDA alone cannot do it. We have to rely on International Conference of Harmonization or ICH to make a change. Because if FDA requires this format, but if Korea, Japan, others does not require different format, it create a burden for you, create a burden for our industry. So therefore, when we design CASA, there's a name. We, FDA is a folks, well, a lot of things I discussed so far is related to FDA change, internal change. But now I'm going to spend a few minutes talk about external change, which is called a structured application essay, which includes the two portions. My folks are ICHM4Q, revision, and also PQCMC, 
or a structured product quality information, which is ICH has not initiated or wins with the M4Q R2 leads to step two, the next project will start. So let me say a few words about ICH M4Q revision. This is a, the, many of you already experienced. M4Q is designed to harmonize structure format for presentation of quality information. We have two module, module two, quality over summary. Module three is data, quality data. Now this is among all, I have to, I can see among all the quality guidance, this M4Q R1 probably has the most significant impact for last 20 years because it's a provide uniform format for applicants to apply for whether Korea, Japan, United States, EMA, so on and so forth. I like think some country has not adopted yet, but the majority country adopt. It's really create a lot of convenience for you industry and for our regulators. <clears throat> I know when I joined the FDA in 99, our new drug site very gradually adopt the CTD format. In fact, the generic drugs still use generic drug application. And today, with the new drugs, the generic drugs, biologics, so on, everybody use exactly the same old format, M4Q R1. So I really want to thank M4Q R1. I really want to thank ICH for the, for the great job they have done 20 years ago. This guidance was finalized 2002. Of course, it's 20 years old, and many of you probably, is, uh, when this guidance was issued, I have to say, I did not look at that. Some of you probably in the kindergarten or elementary school. But 20 years old, there's issues, right? So you can see, first, <clears throat> despite success, major success, not every country, not every region had adopted M4Q. Second, since M 2002, we have issued so many quality guidance, Q8, quality by, quality by design, Q9, risk management, Q10, quality system, Q11, drug substance, Q12, life cycle change management, Q13, which is the, the Dr. Broman mentioned about the continuous manufacturing, Q13, and ECOMAS, so many new guidance was issued. Certainly, 2002 guidance is to a certain extent outdated. Second, a lot of uh, th therapeutics, a lot of uh, gene therapy, uh, cell therapy, tissue product, combination product will not be available 20 years ago. Today become reality. So therefore, today, but unfortunately, we still have to use CDD format in for regulatory submission, for regulatory assessment and approval. Certainly, the format is issue creates issue because it's very outdated. Lastly, we want to make sure we talk about the, what the purpose, cloud-based submission, submission. So therefore, our submission also need to fit the future needs of a digitalization. So there's uh, many incentives for us to make a change. Number one, new therapy. Number two, new guidance. Number three, future digitalization effort become incentive for us to change M4Q R1. So what are specific issues we want to ad address or addressed? The first, we want to include all pharmaceutical drug substance and product. We don't want to exclude, like for example, radio pharmaceuticals. We don't want to ex exclude the vaccine. We don't want to exclude cell gene therapy. We don't want to exclude ATMP, so on. And the second, we want to establish the role of my M2 as the main source of structural location of regulatory quality information. Part of the reason is this important for regulatory conversions. Despite its availability <coughs> in M4Q R1, some regulators still continue to have a local version. So this becomes a significant issue for some of the country, for industry as well. And then organized product and manufacturing information are suitable format for easy access, analysis, and the knowledge management. Incorporate the concept and data expectation present ISG quality guidance aligned with the current recognized <coughs> international standards and guidance and better capture pharmaceutical development and the proposal overall control strategy. Lastly, 
enhance the quality module two to facilitate efficiency and effectiveness of regulatory submission and assessment. So here's the objective of my, uh, the M4QR2. Encourage global coverage of science and risk-based regulatory approaches in the preparation of dossier. Explain and define organization and position of information for module two, module three. Enrich the communication between regulators and applicants, enhance life cycle and knowledge management. Embrace product and process innovation. Enabling efficient <coughs> of use of digital tools for submission and assessment and preparation for close linked upcoming ICG guidance for structured product quality submission. Lastly, elucidate regulatory expectations and uh, supporting efficient assessment, decision making, and action. So we believe that the change of um, um, 4 qr 2 will be benefit our patients and in 4 qr guideline will speed up patient consumer access to pharmaceuticals. We believe that the vision of M4QR1 benefit the industry as well, specifically clarify regulatory expectations, facilitate apply the enhanced quality strategy and vision, streamline regulatory application preparation, improve the quality of submission, facilitate the data and the information management, promote communication with regulators, and foster harmonization standards for information requirement while encourage regulatory coverage. Certainly, we believe that M4QR2 will benefit regulators as well. Enhance the benefit risk framework, increase access to quality data information, streamline regulatory assessment, facilitate oversight of pharmaceutical product quality, increase consistency, efficiency, lastly, improve communication with industry and regulators. So therefore, the leveraging of M4Q CDD format will great facilitate ben benefit pay pay to our patients, consumers, benefit to industry, and benefit to regulators. So where we are, I have to tell you, ICH is a very long process. November of 2019, FDA draft a proposal. In fact, my staff, myself, draft a proposal to revision of CTD format. We submitted ICH. ICH endorsed the FDA M4QR2 proposal in May of 2020. And last year, April 2021, FICH approved the outline of the concept paper, which is drafted by FDA in late 2020. In August of 2021, ICG formed M4QR2 called Informal Working Group. I'm very pleased to be the leader of this informal working group. And this informal group uh, working very hard, less than 60 days, we draft the concept paper and business plan. This was remarkable. And certainly I, I want to take this, uh, acknowledge all the experts in this working group from Korea, from Japan, from China, from Taiwan, and from Saudi Arabia, and from Egypt, from of course EMA, and FDA Health Canada, and, uh, and, and also the Brazil. Uh, we have about 30 people working very hard to get it done. Frankly, we spent two hours early in the morning to phone calls to draft the concept paper and business plan. ICH approved our business plan and, uh, and the concept paper on November, a year ago, November 2021. And then this informal working group become expert working group. I'm very pleased to be the, to be the raptor of this expert working group. We had the first face-to-face -face meeting in Anthings last this year to agree on high level conceptual thinking if on for QR2. As I said, we're still very early stage. We're hoping to have a step one guideline next year and hopefully we have a final guidance in 2025. So still have a, a number of years to go. Now, before I end my talk for question and answer, I want to spend a few minutes discuss next level, I'm envisioning about the structure quality standard for data. 
Now, this slide will probably give you a lot of information, but it represents the reality today. I would say pretty much applicable to all regulators. Of course, applications submitted in ECTD PDF format and go through a regulatory gateway, whether FDA, PMDA, Korea, and so on. And this FDA will be stored uh, within regulators, uh, the electronic system, and assess will begin to assess. Now, assess is pretty much by cutting the paste, cutting the paste, and analyze manually, manually input all the information. And this will create a lot of burden, and uh, certainly, or well, if you had to work in hard, it typically will create a couple hundred, couple hundred pages of assessment. And the in PDF file, it's almost impossible to search. This is the current status right now for you, for I, for all of us. This way envision tomorrow. Tomorrow, as you can see, if at the minimum, will be all the information will be extracted, and uh, a lot of information will be automatically populated, and that information or assess don't have to be manually input. So assessors spend the time to assess the application instead of summarize into the data points. I want to give you a very simple analogy how this could be so helpful, which every single application we received typically involved six facility. Now, this is a six facility. They have about six address. Now, within FDA, because of globalization, of course, all the facilities could come from Korea, could come from China, could come from Eastern Europe, India. Now, each address type is slightly different. For our review to type address from your application to our system, it's really very burdensome. I'm sorry to say on the airplane, I feel the entry card to the Korea. They asked me to enter the address. It took me a while to find the Grand Hyde address, like a 208 Y-E-O-N-G, J-O-N-G, H-A-E. You, for you as a Korea, as a native, you, have, you probably know exactly what's going on. For me, it's, I'm just words by words copied. In, in fact, I probably made a mistake somewhere because so many letters need to copy it. So therefore, for each address, our review probably had to spend six, 30 minutes to enter the data, just address. It's really not fancy, it's very basic. Name, address from your application to our system. You cannot be any more than simple than that. But today, you know how long it takes for the CASA? Five seconds, instead of 30 minutes. Because CASA are able to read what you put it in automatically into our system. In fact, they played out as very beautiful, formatted. Everything beautiful, your phone number, address, everything is already there. Instead, right now, our reviews have to manually. This is just a very basic idea how the IT system would be so helpful. Of course, for you, it's already coming. For like, we have a QR code, right? In order to come to your, a Korea, I have to input to get a QR code. People can scan. But if you think about this, there's no QR code. You have to manually type each time right. You have to type right the type, how, well, how long it takes. So therefore, there is absolutely no doubt. There's absolutely no doubt is the future is very bright, but all of us need to make effort, move into cloud-based regular submission and assessment. I know with your effort, with all effort, with all effort together, in spend all the effort to get there, Someday we'll get there. So future is very bright. With that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much.